Welcome to Vader News. I'm Bambi Francisco, and I'm speaking with Marissa Meyer. She's the VP of Search Products and User Experience at Google. Marissa, thanks for joining me again. Well, this time we're going to talk about how the web is changing our online behavior. And uh, the, the Internet has created all these tools. We call them awareness tools, whether it's Twitter or Flickr or Facebook. And, you know, for sure there is it's far more transparency about our, but our, ourselves. In light of all of this, how do you think that's changing the way people are interacting and, and socializing? Well, I think that there's a lot of things that are really different about, mm -hmm. about the web today and about the world in terms of how quickly people can get information. Mm -hmm. So separate from the social piece, when you look at how search has changed information. Mm -hmm. I remember you know, as growing up, I, we, had, we lived on the street with 14 kids. We had these really big yards. And there was one day when we wanted to set up a baseball diamond. Mm -hmm. And we wanted it to be a real authentic baseball diamond. We wanted to know how many feet there were between the bases. Mm -hmm. And we all got into a big argument because no one could remember and no one knew. And the issue yeah. was that, you know, to find out a fact like that, mm -hmm. yeah. When I was, you know, 10, 11, 12 years old, yeah. it meant going, getting driven to the library, or calling the library, having someone look it up. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. And, coming up, and it was like a half an hour task, and no one wanted to delay, you know, delay the game or, you know, be that much of a stickler. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the, the argument continued, and eventually we settled on a compromise. But today, someone would just run inside, type that query into Google, and know 30 seconds later. So what used to be 30-minute right. research tasks has now become 30 seconds. So I think that changes the way people interact each day. And we kid around at, at home um, with the kids. Sometimes they, they'll ask for certain questions, and we'll say, I wish there was this big ball of information in the sky. <laughs> we can just type in and ask the question. And we just kid around and just say that because we know we can instantly get that. So it's true. I think also when you think about how do people learn, how do they spend their day? Uh, I think that, you know, there's a lot of questions we've heard. Is Google making us stupid? Because right. all these facts are just so readily available. Right, right. I actually think is what's it happening is it means that you can spend more, less of your time memorizing particular facts because you know that Google has them. Sure. Spend more time thinking critically about problems, being creative. I think it really frees up people to think do in new ways. But it's an things. interesting challenge. And it does mean, like, how do we work? How do we learn? How do you, you know, educate people like it's it, you know it's a different right. set of challenges because the skill set of when you know when you can rely on something for all the facts right. the skill set you really have to develop is how do you think critically about those facts how do you right. apply them in an interesting way to new problems it's almost like cooking now you can go to whole foods and get to now you can mm -hmm. just uh, you can just put all your energy towards creating parties or building parties <laughs> or doing something else now um, you're in charge of the user experience at Google You've been there for since 1999. So what are the top three things that have changed in terms of just what you've seen, how people are interacting? Uh, well, I think that users, um, one, really look for interaction on the web. The web is incredibly dynamic. Mm -hmm. So when you put a page in front of them, if there's a button or a web form or something for them to fill out, that is really what gets all the attention, mm -hmm. right? And so it's interesting to see how dynamic people expect the web to be. So for example, today we've been rolling out Search Wiki, mm -hmm. which for signed in Google users allows you to actually edit your search results. You can float results to the top, you can remove results, you can annotate oh, results. And it's really, I think it's great because it shows how much more dynamic the web is becoming in mm -hmm. terms of expectations. People expect that you know you have apps on Facebook, you have gadgets on Google. Yeah. Right? You, you know, the way you can participate and how dynamic the response from the web is is really amazing. I think the other element that's clear to me has really risen over time is how personalized people expect the web to be. When you look at, say, online news, mm -hmm. the sort of standard broadcast news format doesn't work. People want news that's personalized to them, to their interests. People want videos that are personalized to them, to their particular interest area. And the web is, of course, adaptive and able to match people up to content that really interests them. So it's becoming more and more personalized over time. And then the final piece I'd highlight, which is sort of a branch of personalization, is the web's becoming obviously just a lot more social. Mm -hmm. How we all connect with each other, how quickly you interact. I mean, we've gone from, you know, you not maybe being able to talk to a friend you'd see tonight all day. Right. Then we had cell phones. We're all, you know, calling each other all day. And now, of course, you have IM. Right. So you could be sitting in a meeting and say, can we make it 7.30 instead of 7.00? Sure. And they get an answer back, yes, which, you know, when you think about how that changes, how we all work, how we live our lives, it's, you know, a really fundamental change. Now, you talked about personalization, and so the original conceit of the web was to, you could almost be anonymous. 
And I remember thinking when I first, you know, got tons of email when I was at, at Market Watch, and I used to think, oh, it's some crazy person in a, you know, an attic or something. But in fact, people, because of the personalization, you really are known. I mean, do you think that there is, um, do you think we're more transparent or there's room for anonymity or what's your thoughts? Uh, I guess my, my philosophy there is that I think the virtual world mirrors the physical world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in the physical world, it's really hard to do something entirely anonymously. Mm -hmm. Right, and mm -hmm. the physical world's been around a lot longer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. than the virtual world, and so mm -hmm. while the virtual world, you know, does have some constructs around anonymity, right. over time, you know, it will become harder to do things anonymously, and that's because people want to build a notion of trust. Right, that's really what social networks are about. Who do you know? Who can you trust? How do you start mirroring mm -hmm. what you know in the physical world, in 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 the in the virtual world? And that's not to say that you won't have privacy. I think. We should still be very transparent. The mm -hmm. web overall should be very transparent. It should give users a lot of choice mm -hmm. and control about what they reveal. Mm -hmm. But I do think that over time, we'll start to see the virtual world trend more and more to the physical world, where it will become harder for you to do things anonymously, certainly among your immediate peers, the ones mm -hmm. who are physically in your space, right? They know right, roughly right. what you do. And that might not be, and that doesn't mean everyone knows, but it means at least some people know. And so if you think about how the social network translates to that, the people you're friends with may know some of, some of what you do online, but I think that needs to be done with user choice and transparency. Do you think that you will have more friends or you will have more friends in two-year chunks or you'll have friends that are, because you're, you're, we're just, there's so much available to us. Or do you think that you'll have fewer friends and there will be this backlash? And what's, what's um, your view on? I think that the number of friends and the, the overall pace of friends will, I would guess, will remain largely unchanged. Mm -hmm. Right? Certainly there's people on social networks who will accept lots and lots of friends, people yeah. they haven't met. But the truth is, if you really are trying to establish virtual connections with people who you're actually connected with mm -hmm. in the physical world, you only have so much time during the day to meet people, right, to right. actually get to know them. Right. And so you know, that's really the fixed constraint yeah. around how many friends you have and how well you know them, is how much time do you have in the day to get to know them. And so I think that probably the number of friends and the length and duration of different friendships and connections will be roughly the same. Given this move to personalization and socialization on the web, how do you see the younger generation, those who don't who grew up in a world where when they were think, figuring out how far the baseball diamonds were from first base or so, they already had Google and their friends were on Facebook. And how do you think they're going to be different from, say, the generation, that, say, our generation? Well, I think that when you look at it, they have a lot of the same attributes I just talked about, mm -hmm. right? In some ways, they're more dynamic, mm -hmm. right? They want things that are more power personalized and customized to them, mm -hmm. and they're a lot more social and open socially with what's going on with them. That's why they're Twittering, that's why they're blogging, that's why they're on Facebook, right? And so I think they have, they, they, they are mirroring the medium that they've mm -hmm. grown up participating in. Mm -hmm. And so I think that you see, you know, a lot of those things. I, I think that some of the most electrifying things are that, you know, they use technology in ways that you never think of. Yeah. Right? I, I was reading the other day a study about how when you give young children yeah. cell phones, mm -hmm. they realize that they have a camera in their cell phone and they begin taking pictures of words they don't know how to say. Interesting. So it's actually like, you, I would never think like, well, yeah. a cell phone might actually help a child learn how to read faster. Yeah. Because yeah. they'll come home at night and say, I didn't know how to say this word. And I didn't yeah, know how yeah. to say this word. Right? Right? Like, you know, and they actually are taking pictures of street signs. Like, that's really interesting. That's a way I'd never think of using a cell phone. Right, right, but for right. them, if you, you know, if you, if you know you have a camera on your person, and there's something you know you want to ask someone about later, you just right. take a picture, and it's, it's interesting to think about how some of these technologies will be applied in ways we really didn't foresee. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they want to, uh, and, they, and they're going to have more control. And that's sort of we're nurturing these our children to be, to to be more in control. So, Marissa, thanks again. I've been speaking with Marissa Meyer. She's the VP of Search Products and User Experience on Bambi Francisco.